Now I'd like to discuss a little bit about acceleration constraints. This isn't quite going to be a full discussion because accelerations will come back in the next section when we talk about ropes and pulleys. And so this is a start. So in this picture, we have a car and a truck that are accelerating to the right. They're connected by a rope. It says it's under tension. What we can infer is that these are moving together. So the acceleration of our car must be equal to the acceleration of our truck. And for this situation, where we would normally define our coordinate system, positive x to the right, positive y up, we can say that they're both equal to just some positive value x acceleration, right? If you wanted to, you could just call that a for acceleration. But we get to make that simplification because we see that they're moving together. And I'd like to stress that initially in setting up a problem, you should use subscripts to distinguish between the accelerations of your different objects. But then writing an equation like this is using an acceleration constraint. So please don't start by writing down, well, a equals a, a equals a. Try to explicitly use those subscripts to imply that this is the acceleration of the car and this is the acceleration of the truck. We then use acceleration constraints to say that they're the same and you might choose to give it a simplified notation at that point, like in this case a sub x. So I'll next show a slightly more complicated scenario, which is why you want to do this. Again, it might seem in a simple situation like this, like going through the effort of really explicitly using acceleration constraints and writing an equation like this, that this might not seem necessary. But the reason we set up this machinery, we go through these steps, is because later on we're going to get to a more complicated scenario. And if you just start by calling every acceleration A, you will definitely be making some mistakes. So the goal is to use simpler scenarios to practice the notation and practice the physics tools and processes so that when you get to more complicated scenarios, you do it correctly. So here is a slightly more complicated scenario. And again, there is a string and a pulley involved. And in the next sequence of videos, we'll talk more about what it specifically means to assume an ideal pulley and an ideal string, as we usually will. But for right now, let's just try to understand what's happening here. I think you have a pretty good intuition of what's happening. This is one string or one rope that goes over a pulley. And so we want to define our coordinate system because this is a two-dimensional problem. So what do we know about this? These are connected by a rope, and that means acceleration constraints are going to come in. But note that they're now accelerating in different directions. So what can we say about the acceleration of A and the acceleration of B? Note that in this case, they're defined as vectors, and we would be thinking about this again in 2D. So the first thing is that we know that the accelerations have the same magnitude, partially because it says so in blue right here, but also because these are tied together by the same string. You can kind of make a calculus argument that if the string goes a little bit to the right in a certain amount of time, that the string here must go down by the same amount in the same amount of time. That makes an argument for why the velocities are the same. And then you say that, well, if the velocities are changing, they must be changing in the same way since it's tied together. You don't explicitly need to make that argument any time that you have things uh, tied together this way. And again, in the next section, we'll make it a little more complicated. You can just say that the magnitudes are the same. But now we want to define the direction. And again, this is why I define my coordinate system and I distinguish between when I'm talking about magnitudes, when I'm talking about vectors. So this is a situation where you need to be careful about that. I want to relate these two things together. And I'm going to say that I have an acceleration of block A, which is in the positive x hat direction. And I see that my acceleration of block B is in the negative y hat direction. So I'm not saying that these are equal. I'm just saying that they're related. They can't be equal because these are two different vectors. This one's in the positive x direction. This one's in the negative y direction. So I can't say these things are equal because they're not, but they do have the same magnitude. Now, one thing to note is that in this case, we see that 
just from hopefully your intuition, block A is accelerating to the right and block B is accelerating down. We can get to some more complicated scenarios where you don't initially know if A is accelerating to the right or to the left. And so I'm going to make an argument here that makes space for that. But in this situation, you can start by making this assumption. If you don't know which way they're accelerating for sure, you can always start by writing it this way and see at the end if you get a negative value, which means that the direction you assumed is actually the reverse. There's nothing wrong with that. So what we can say, we know that B is down, right? So it's in the minus Y direction, but we know that they have the same magnitudes. So this is just equal to my acceleration B vector, but my magnitudes are equal, which means that I can just take my magnitude here, which I write this way, and I can plug it in. So what I've done is that I have my B vector here. I'm preserving my direction. That's really important. But now I've taken my magnitude, which I knew was equal, and I've plugged that in. So again, I didn't write an equal sign here because I was still relating their, uh, I still was maintaining their uh, directions and vectors are not equal if they're going in different directions. But I knew that there's a relationship and I now can say, okay, my acceleration in B, I know my magnitude and I know my direction. You wouldn't normally write this down. I was just trying to clarify that you can't write an equal sign here because they're related, but not equal. So this you can write, that your B acceleration vector is equal to your A magnitude and you know the direction. So what does this mean? Well, you would go on to do whatever your calculation is. And in the end, if you find out when you're doing this calculation that your acceleration A, right, this is now not a vector, it's a magnitude, is positive. That tells you that A is traveling to the right and B is traveling down, just like this picture shows, which is how you started this assumption. But again, there might be a scenario where in the very end you get a negative sign with A, AA -A, as this is. And sometimes students will just drop minus signs and push them around as they think should happen. But minus signs tell you something. And in this scenario, which again wouldn't be this one, but maybe there are other forces involved, you might get a negative sign for A, A sub A. And that would tell you that A is actually traveling to the left, right? It's the opposite of what you wrote down here. That would tell you then that B is traveling up. So please be careful about this. You have to make one assumption here to pick a direction that this is going to the right. That then defines B to be going down. And in the end, if you get a minus sign, that means that you picked the wrong direction. And there's nothing wrong with that. So again, in the next sequence of videos, we'll do some more complicated scenarios involving this and starting by writing things down very carefully in terms of directions and magnitudes and being very careful about the difference between vectors and magnitudes will be very helpful when we deal with more complicated scenarios such as the Atwood machine.